Thanks very much, Jay, and a very good afternoon to you wherever and however you're listening to us on Talk Sport 2. As game day continues and our concentration here at Villa Park is pretty much on both ends of the table. Aston Villa looking to make it into the Champions League. Their last top four finish was back in the days of Savo Milosevic, 95-96 since Villa were last at that sort of level come the end of the season. They've come close in between times with Martin O'Neill's Aston Villa with a couple of sixth place finishes. But fourth place is not strictly their own. Tottenham are breathing down Villa's necks and they have a game in hand with which they can leapfrog over Aston Villa. So games like this today against the Baliga Brentford are going to be pretty important to Unai Emery and co if they are going to hang on to what could be the final Champions League qualification spot. Although, of course, coefficient, 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 that could all change. As for Brentford, well, three wins in 20 is pretty awful reading for Thomas Frank. We've mentioned the absentees that have been unavailable to the Bees for most of the season, particularly in defence. But there is one important player back today in Brian and Bermo. And he comes back in for Ivan Tony, who's been dropped to the bench by Thomas Frank, just as a slight precaution. But Ollie Watkins will take on his former club again today. He scored 49 goals as a B before his move in 2020 to Aston Villa. Now he's an England international. Didn't play against Manchester City in the week. He'll be desperate. Now he's back in the side to get back amongst the goals and put one over on his previous employers. Watkins is one of six changes made by Emery from that defeat at Manchester City that I was at on Wednesday night. Emiliano Martinez missed out an hour before kickoff, pulling out with a stomach illness, but he's back in goal in place of Robin Olsen. Pau Torres displaces Clement Longley. John McGinn back from suspension in place of Tim Robinham. And Leon Bailey comes in for Musa Diaby. And Yuri Tielemans for Nicolo Zaniolo. John Duran, the other player, making way. So it's Martinez in goal for Villa. Consa, Carlos, Torres and Dinya in the back four. McGinn and Douglas Luiz holding in midfield. Bailey, Tielemans and Rogers behind Watkins in attack. As for Brentford, three changes from their 0-0 draw with Brighton. Yarmul Yuk, Lewis Potter and Tony are missing out. Damsgaard, Region and Umbermo come in, so it's Mark Flecken in goal. A back three of Zanka, Ayer and Collins. Roslev, Damsgaard, Janelt, Jensen and Region across midfield from right to left. And Bermo and Wisser up front. And it's Brentford in their change strip of sky blue shirts and dark blue shorts and socks who will have the kickoff. And they'll be heading to the whole ten to our right. Perry and myself sat about 25 rows back in the Trinity Road stand here at Villa Park. And our position is about the midway point of the half that Brentford are defending in this first half. With a whole ten to our right, the north stand to our left. And the north stand is what Villa will be attacking in their claret and blue shirts, white shorts and blue socks. And Pau Torres, who didn't feature against Manchester City in the week, sends the ball back to his keeper Martinez left with a clearance from him looking for Ollie Watkins but Brentford win the battle of head tennis at least temporarily but the ball's back now on the left hand side with Luca Dinia give it away though Jensen plays it up to Wisser now he gets it back from Damsgaard Johan Visser up to the edge of the D plays it left great run from Reggion into the box and fires it wide what a great early chance for Brentford to take the lead as Sergio Reggion burst past Leon Bailey but the shot snaked wide of the post and Villa have a goal kick, nil-nil. Excellent play from Brentford, Luca Dinia giving the ball away cheap. He just ball fights his way out to this up. Then Vissa just gets his head up. Regulon's on the overlap. dancy has got to go across Martinez. He's actually gone to near post. To be fair to Leon Bailey, he's trapped back and just slid in and just knocked Regulon off balance. That's a massive chance for Brentford in the first minute here at Villa Park. Reguilon's got to be going across Martinez. That's all because Luca Dinia just gave the ball away. It's good vision from uh, Mikel Dansgaard, one of the Brentford players coming back into the side today to spot the run of Reggion. And it very nearly bought dividends for Brentford inside the opening minute. So 0-0 on TalkSport 2. Lob downfield looking for Wisser by Sergio Reggion. But he barged into Diego Carlos. So Villa had themselves a free kick. A reminder that all three of Aston Villa's Premier League home defeats have come in 2024 after what was an extraordinary impregnable 2023 it seemed at Villa Park for Unai Emery's side but they're looking to build on that 2-0 win against Wolves they got here last time they played in front of their own but they've lost possession again and it's Matthias Jensen darting down the inside right position 
for Brentford. Away to our right of the whole thing, running out towards the corner flag. Tries to win a corner of Dinya, but it came fortuitously for Villa into the path of Morgan Rogers instead. Douglas Louise does well, really tight to this near touch on a winter throw off Rose left. 0 0. Is someone told Luca Dinya that we've actually kicked off? It's the second time he's been caught in possession, and we just wondered, Dan, how Villa were going to line up where John McGinn was going to play, where Eurotillian was going to play. Just look like John McGinn at the moment is playing in the number 10 position behind Ollie Watkins, and Eurotillian's playing that little bit deeper just alongside Douglas Louise. That's Perry Groves alongside me for the afternoon, former Arsenal winger. Earlier today, Manchester City saw off Crystal Palace by four goals to two, live on TalkSport. Whilst here on TalkSport 2, the East Anglian derby went the way of Norwich again. A 1-0 win against Ipswich to consolidate their sixth spot in the championship. All the other games kicking off around the country. I'll keep you updated with scores from around the Premier League and the EFL this afternoon. There's so much going on. So many goals to decide so much. Rotherham, of course, relegated last night. The first team whose destiny is sorted for next season. They lost at home to Plymouth and are relegated back to League One. Villa in possession with uh, Diego Carlos and Esri Conza. Out to the right-hand side and Leon Bailey in front of those Brentford fans opposite us in the Doug Ellis stand. They only have the bottom tier today. Lots of Villa fans in the top tier of the Doug Gellis above them. Tielemans lofts the ball, looking for Lucadinha out on the left wing, but the ball was lobbed too straight and it just bounced through to Mark Flecken, who was being praised by Thomas Frank for his goalkeeping and his improvement in front of goal. He had a pretty tricky first half of the season as David Reyes' replacement, Perry Groves, but he was getting lots of... Lots of the good stuff from his manager in recent times. Yeah, I think he just found uh, the physicality of the Premier League very difficult. Just looking there, Dan, she went about Fleck and he just pinged it into Jensen. Jensen looked like he was man to marked and it was a fantastic little queer flick. And Vermo's just been clipped at the edge of the area by Diego Carlos and that's a free kick to Brentford. It's quite a way out to the right-hand side on the 18-yard line. And Vermo just slowly picking himself up but... This favours a left-footed effort from somebody in a sky blue Brentford shirt. Nil-nil. Dangerous position here for the visitors. Yeah, not necessarily challenge there from Diego Carlos and Wormo, and it was worked brilliantly. You mentioned about Flecken and say so he pinged it into Matthias Janssen and he looked like he was man-to-man -man marked. Fantastic Cruyff flick that then released Rosliff on this right-hand side, then into Wormo. So there, he just gets his left foot to it. Douglas Louise comes in. So Diego Carlos comes in, trips him up, unnecessary free kick. Really dangerous position for Brentford, just on the right-hand side of the penalty area. As you said there, perfect for a left footer. And Burmo looks like his favourite to strike this. Jensen's next to him, who of course is a right footer, if they wanted to do something a little bit different. But it seems to be Brian and Burmo, who's very deliberately pacing back from the ball. There's a three-man Villa wall protecting Emilio Martinez's near post. So let's see what Mbermo can conjure up. Back in the Brentford side today here at Villa Park. Left footed, goes for the near post and skims the side netting and goes behind. A few Brentford fans thought it was in opposite and they've just been reminded by the Villa fans that it's still nil-nil. Yeah, it just grazed the side netting. Decent effort from Brian and Bermo with his left foot. He's just trying to bend it in Martin's top left-hand corner. I actually think that he could have been a bit braver and actually because Brentford had four men in the wall next to Villa's three-man wall where he just goes, I think it was Yanka who was on the edge of the wall where he can just try and hit his shot at him then Martinez is completely unsighted. Goals going in elsewhere, Portsmouth leads Shrewsbury in League One, that's the League One leaders, 14 unbeaten, five points clear, leading through an own goal. Crawley lead at Mansfield in League Two. Just two points clear of the chasing Pat Crawley in the playoffs, but they're ahead at second place Mansfield through Kellen Gordon and Stockport, who are the leaders of League Two. They're a goal up at Sutton United. Paddy Madden with an early goal for the Hatters, and Perry will be very keen to see how that game unfolds. Colchester at home to Wrexham today. That's second bottom ahead that are playing third top today at the job serve. Since Steve Morrison took over, you know, starting about a little surge on Stony Bottom, weren't they? They won the last four on the trot before today. And Colts at home against Wrexham, it's a sellout dance. 10,000 will be at the job serve. Oh, good. Well, I hope they, well, Danny Cowley and Nicky Cowley trying to work the Oracle and get them out of trouble. Brentford need to get a little bit clearer of trouble. 
and they've lost possession and Villa are coming forward down this near side with Morgan Rogers. Good strength to hold off Rooslev. Dinya is out here with him, but he's worked it back five yards or so to Douglas Luiz. Clips the ball into the box, but the angle was all wrong. McGinn had made a run across the area from right to left, but it went even beyond him and out of play for a Brentford goal kick. Seven gone on TalkSport 2, it's 0-0. Yeah, just two straight there from Douglas Luiz. John McGinn making a run from that number 10 position. He's trying to get himself beyond Ollie Watkins, which he's done a couple of times, but the ball's into him haven't been of sufficient quality. He just goes out for a goal kick. And Brentford want to play out from the back. The centre half splitting, but Villa putting a high press on. One kick downfield from Fleck and flicked on by Visser and Mbomo is offside as he received that from Johan Visser and a free kick to Villa inside their own half. Not done the double over Brentford since the 1950s but they won the reverse fixture 2-1. Ollie Watkins who was getting some grief that day responded having gone 1-0 down him and Alex Moreno scored the goals that won the points for Villa. Here's Douglas Louise on the halfway line. Threads the ball up to Morgan Rogers, 10 yards inside the Bedford half. Good ball out to Bailey on the right wing. He's going to have a run at Region. Then turns inside at the right-hand corner of the penalty area. Lays it off to Consa. And Consa lays it back into midfield. First for Tielemans and then Pau Torres who takes over. Now Douglas Louise gives it back to Torres. About 15 yards inside the Brentford half of the field. Brentford got everybody behind the ball inside their own half of the field. Yeah, it's all a bit static at the moment. You've got to say Dam's guy did brilliantly there because when Leon Bailey had the ball out on the right hand side you know he's going to want to cut inside. So Dam's guy made sure that he doubled up with Sergio Reguilón so when Leon Bailey tried to come inside it was Dam's guy just nicked the ball off him. Concert. Looking like uh, he's going to be on the plane to Germany with the England squad. Esri Concert playing it right back today as he has for the past few weeks just as adept to centre half as we know Morgan Rogers left hand side for Villa tries to release Dinya on the overlap but there wasn't really enough yardage between where he played the ball and the dead ball line for him to find his teammate it was well over the dead ball line before Dinya was anywhere near it Brentford have a free kick it's 0-0 yes it's third time coming down this right hand side this time it was Luca Dini just trying to go on the overlap just over hit there from Morgan Rogers going up for another goal kick which Fleckham will take, right-footed at this north stand end, away to our left, drives it into out to the right-hand side, Worst left goes up with Dinya, but Dinya heads it out of play for a throw to Brentford on this near side. Brentford eight without a win, remember, and they've never won at Villa Park in nine visits since the 1935-36 season. It's going to be Fleckham, that's you know, when we've had, we've had four goal kicks. If he takes a little bit quicker, because Villa have got a high pressure, they leave 4v4 at the back. And what he's trying to do, obviously, Zanka, Ayer and Collins split, you know, so they want to play out from the back. But if he can get his head up quick and then ping it into Enwermo, he said they've got a 4v4 situation, but he hasn't done that yet. He's just taken too much time. Ten minutes gone on TalkSport 2. Nil-nil at Villa Park. Ball fired into Ollie Watkins, but couldn't control it. He had a player right at his back in Christopher Ayer, who comfortably won the ball back for Brentford so one big chance so far this half it's gone to Brentford when Region was played in left hand side of the box by Damsgaard but great sliding challenge back from Leon Bailey to put off Region, getting the shot on goal balls back with Emiliano Martinez the Villa goalkeeper passes into the centre of his own half and it's calmly laid back by Tielemans for Pau Torres now Douglas Luiz up to the halfway line, faced up by Jensen, plays the ball along the deck to McGinn, he lays it off to Tielemans, they've moved inside the Brentford half now, working out to the right hand side and Leon Bailey, level with the edge of the area, plenty back for Brentford, was clipped into the box looking for McGinn who made a run, Collins got a foot in, only got it half clear, it's back with Bailey on the right wing, trying to get past Region and he's won a corner, that's back came Damsgaard to help out his fullback Reguilón and it's gone out for Villa's first corner of the game. Nil-nil. Very smooth there from Aston Villa starting from Martinez the goalkeeper into Tielemans and out onto his left hand side into Douglas Louise then back out onto the right hand side to Leon Bailey. Damsgaard doubling up again. Bailey tries to come inside to get his cross in. Ball goes out for a corner for Aston Villa over on the right. Where the North Stand meets the Doug Ellis and it's floated in by Bailey but straight to Fleck and who caught it very comfortable, got balked actually afterwards by Diego Carlos after he caught it 
There was nobody around him when he caught the ball and then he was barged into once he was on his way back down again. And the referee's just having a, a look at Mark Flecken to see whether he needs treatment. It's a going to be a free kick I think for Brentford anyway. Scores 0-0. He's a lucky boy actually, Diogo Carlos, because he knows that's exactly what he's doing. Basically he's left one on Mark Flecken, you said there, because he just plucked it out through like he's picking apples off a tree. And as he's just gone to go down to Grant, Diogo Carlos has come on and just turned his shoulder and made sure his shoulder hit Mark Flecken in the face. I think if the referee Michael Salisbury was a little bit closer, he would give Diogo Carlos a yellow card there because uh -huh. yeah. he knew exactly what he was doing. Coventry won Leeds nil in the championship. Remember, Ipswich lost at lunchtime in their bid to get points to get back to the top of the championship. And Ellis Sims, what a season he's having right now for Coventry City. He's given them the lead at the CBS Arena against Leeds. Remember, Leeds started the day in second in the championship. And Coventry trying to catch up with Norwich, who beat Ipswich earlier in that East Anglian derby, live on TalkSport 2. 0-0 nil -nil here at Villa Park. Villa coming forward with Tielemans. Back to this near side, the left-hand side, and Rogers Can't get past Rursleff, who's barring his progress down this near left-hand touchline. So it's rolled back infield to Pau Torres, the centre-half. He squares it left for Diego Carlos, 20 yards inside Brentford territory. Again, the game's taken down to a static walking pace, as Brentford just have everybody back behind the ball, and a daring Villa to find that one-and-two-touch football to get around them. Yeah. Here's Conser. Brentford have got the flat back five that's just defending right along the edge of the 18 yard box. Three midfield players, Yellow Jensen and Damsgaard in front of them. Now they're looking spread play right to left in the to pick out Dinya and he's picked it up neatly. He's onside. He'll roll it back to Douglas Louise, but again, everybody back in place for Brentford, it seems. Villa looking to work the Oracle here. Douglas Louise comes in field from this near left hand touchline, midway point of the half. Just flicks it across to the inside right position where Concert is waiting. Further out to the right wing it goes to Leon Bailey, but he's got two on him. He's got Damsgaard and Reggie on watching him, and it's Damsgaard who puts it out for a throw on that far side. Nil-nil. Yeah, you can say that uh, Brentford have been working on their team shape. Probably Thursday and Friday where Thomas Frank has, has said to Damsgaard, as soon as Leon Bailey gets the ball, I want you coming inside, because he's going to come inside his left foot, and make sure that Reggie doesn't go on, let him go on the outside. Dini picks it up for Villa again, round about the left-hand corner of the penalty area, has to work it back to the centre of half though and Douglas Louise, Villa having a lot of possession here and a lot of territory, but yet to test Flecken, perhaps they can work something here as the ball goes out to Bailey on the right-hand side, but it's a misplaced pass from Concert, Bailey was off balance and the ball came off the outside of his boot and went out for a Brentford throw, nil-nil here. You're listening to Aston Villa versus Brentford on TalkSport 2 with now. Don't forget that with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Brighton versus Arsenal. Live today, contract free with a now membership. Just search now sports for the details. Perry Groves alongside me today. Yeah, it's all a little bit pedestrian, is it, from Aston Villa? We said they're dominating possession dance and most of the players have been in Brentford's half, but they haven't tested Mark Flecken at all. Good ball, just nicked through the middle from Concert for Tielemans. He beats McGinn, scurrying towards the edge of the penalty area. Trying to poke it through Collins' legs. It comes out to Tielemans, works it to the left-hand corner of the box, and Dinya. Dinya with a first-time cross, but again, that's a comfortable catch for Mark Flecken as that corner was a little earlier. we played a quarter of an hour on TalkSport 2, and it's still goalless. Yes, just too lofty there from Luca Dinya with his left foot. He's got to be putting a mid-ball whip on it. A plenty of time to set himself as well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, getting along the six-yard box. But again, John McGinn found himself in a little position in number 10 position, got himself turned and it's a simple pass out to his right hand side to Leon Bailey and he just hits Sergio Rigon's left foot and that just quells Aston Villa's attack. Jensen for Brentford on the halfway line, hugging this near touch line, right in front of where Una Emery is standing and watching, just clips it through the middle, looking for the run of Vissa and Concert has fallen and he was being pulled back by Vissa, it's a free kick to the hosts as Doncaster take the lead at Morecambe in League 2, Luke Molyneux for Doncaster in this extraordinary chase for the playoffs between so many teams from 7th downwards and Morecambe who are starting the day in 8th, just two points off Gillingham after back-to-back -back wins are behind at the Globe Arena. Martin is going to take this free kick for Aston Villa in his all lime green goalkeeping jersey, told he's got to have it outside the D by Michael Salisbury, our referee today. 
And Martinez surveys the scene. Dinya moves forward down this near side. Watkins, Rogers is an obvious target. He's the tallest man, and that's who he's aiming for, Martinez. And Rogers climbs and wins the header. Nods it infield, looking for the run of Watkins. But it was dealt with by Ayer. Was ball up to halfway, isn't held up by Mbomo. Back in the Brentford side today, tidied up by Villa, 0-0. Yeah, really good play from Douglas Louise there. Made sure that he engaged Brian Mbomo, just moves his body, showed him off the ball. Now Villa tried to take a quick free kick then, as McGinn was bundled over by Ayer. But the referee didn't allow him to do that, and that's what the frustration was that you heard around us here at Villa Park as the fans felt that Michael Salisbury did Villa a disservice. And you wanted to begin again, and Michael Salisbury said that the ball was still moving. You can hear the moans and groans from the Villa fans. I can hear the cogs whirring in your head trying to come up with that line about John McGinn. You must have been up all night thinking of that one. It's come to me. Did it really? Yeah. Free kick to Aston Villa, midway point of the Brentford half. I've got sugar rush from the uh, <laughs> jelly bunny. Yeah, have another jelly bunny. Douglas Louise and McGinn standing over this free kick, just to the left of centre, midway point of the Brentford half. It's Louise who sends the ball into the area, but again, very comfortable for Flecken to deal with on the bounce. Nil-nil it stays, and Flecken clears from hands downfield, asking in Burmo to give chase. Uh, header cross from McGinn, back defending, and Louise will guide it back to the goalkeeper, Martin. But he had to clear first time with Visser herring down on him. Bit of head tennis inside the Villa half, but Villa bring it down and Rogers guides it back very neatly to Tielemans. And now there's a bit of space for Villa to operate in down the right-hand side with Consa. Looks for Bailey, who's only got one defender to beat here in Sergio Reguilón. Gets to the right-hand corner of the box, but then back comes Damsgaard, the other player on that left-hand side. Very neat defending from Mikel Damsgaard, and he brings it clear for the Bees, nil-nil. Yeah, doing a brilliant defensive job at the moment, Mikel Damsgaard. So there, make sure he's doubling up on Ian Bailey. Ian Bailey's got to go on the outside dance. He's got to just put a little bit of doubt into Sergio Reguilón's mind because he keeps cutting inside, he keeps running into Damsgaard. Just, like, mix it up a little bit, go on the outside. Worst phase out, you get a throw in and you could get yourself uh, a corner. Aston Villa nil, Brentford nil on TalkSport 2. As we approach the 20-minute mark here at Villa Park on a sunny Saturday afternoon, although sun's gone beyond the clouds just for a moment pretty blustery as well Villa are playing with the wind at their backs in this first half as they head for the north stand it's back with Diego Carlos just ahead of the centre circle inside the Brentford half of the field tries to play it along the net looking for Douglas Louise intercepted by Brentford and straight away they're trying to set Johan Visser away but brilliant starting position from the Villa keeper Martinez who came out to the middle of his own half to retrieve possession yeah just looking at Matthias Janssen there, he's just really disappointed himself because if he just puts it more out to Brentford's left wing and gives uh, Visser more chance to bend his run, he gets the ball, but you said they're brilliant starting just from Martinez. Now McGinn at the other end for Aston Villa, down the right-hand side of the Brentford box. Was dispossessed by Nathan Collins, but he couldn't keep the ball in play. Villa have a throw in front of the Brentford fans on that far side. And it's worked back again to the base of the midfield. And Diego Carlos in the centre circle for Aston Villa. Far more productive second season for him after injury blighted Diego Carlos his first season at Villa Park. How many goals around in the Premier League and the EFL? No goals here, no goals anywhere else in the three o'clock in the Premier League, although earlier today you heard it on TalkSport. Six goals, four of them scored by Manchester City at Crystal Palace. And Arsenal play later against Brighton at the Amex and Liverpool, the other team involved in the title race, go to Manchester United tomorrow. Plenty of updates on that game with Perry and Alex Crook and Sam Matterface on the Sunday session from 1pm. This is a bit like a training game dance at the moment, is it? When Villa are in possession, they get into Brentford's half. Brentford have gone the, the 5 3 2 within the width of their own 18 yard box, and basically, it's like saying a coach saying, Right, you've got 10 outfield players in front, you've got to try and break them down. At the mm. minute, Villa aren't passing the ball quick enough. They're getting uh, Brentford, giving Brentford the time to get their shape all sorted out, and uh, at the moment, Brentford have been very, very disciplined. Good I am quite comfortable. Hands on hips down just beneath us to our right hand side. You could fit a roll of lino under both arms there. He's got lots on his mind, it seems. I thought it was more like the Rigsby style. He's very Rigsby, sure. yeah, very rising down. Best one for the teenagers <laughs> listening to Talk Sport 2 this afternoon. Good one, Perry. <laughs> Douglas Louise making strides through the centre of the pitch. But he's dispossessed 
and Brentford have it back with Mikel Damsgaard looks early to get Mbomo in behind Pau Torres Mbomo picks it up centre of the half skips away from Pau Torres threads it through to Vissa inside the area great challenge Diego Carlos to win it back and clear it away for Villa that was danger that's what Brentford are trying to do this afternoon launch the quick counter attacks and between them and Burma and Visser nearly worked it well for Brentford 0-0 well, they had some good, brilliant first touch from Brian and Burma the outside of his left foot cutting inside and just tried to play inside Diogo Carlos and to be fair to Diogo Carlos it was a brilliant sliding tackle just to take it off this is toe here's Watkins for Villa down the right hand side of the area goes for the byline checks back gets it back to Leon Bailey right hand side of the box plays it along the deck and it's cleared away by Collins and out of play for a Villa throw 0-0 yeah, better play from Leon Bailey in that wide position decided this time to go on the outside on his right foot he just tried to play it along the six yard box really good block from Christophe Aya at the near post Villa get themselves back in position again and Brentford getting back themselves into that 5-3-2 shape what I'm looking at right now is what I've seen four or five times whilst I've been describing the game to you Diego Carlos in possession just in front of the centre circle everything to his right and left both in Villa and Brentford shirts it's gone out to Leon Bailey on the right wing on the far side of the field from us Villa attacking the north stand in this first half at 0-0 back it goes to Yuri Tielemans one of the players recalled this afternoon by Unai Emery six changes from the defeat to Manchester City in midweek Dinya one of the survivors of that game gives it back to Pau Torres so it's currently Aston Villa or Brentford for the latest odds head to William Hill the official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage where right now you can get Villa's win at 7-10 to 10, the draw 13-5 to 5. if you fancy a Brentford win that's 4-1 to 1. all thanks to William Hill the epic value all season with William Hill 18 plus begambleaware.org is the website Watkins, the former Brentford player, lays it off to midfield. It's worked down the right-hand side of the box for Bailey. Into the near post, looking for Morgan Rogers, And it's put behind for Villa's second corner of the game. Good defending from Brentford, but Villa have another corner. Nil-nil. Yeah, Christopher Ryan just blocking off that near post area. Great little play from Leon Bailey initially into Watkins. Watkins into McGinn and then back to Douglas Ruiz. And he's just trying to roll in. Leon Bailey's made a brilliant run and he gets himself to the byline and when he gets the byline you've got to be dinking up to the far post with right foot good blocker from near post from Raya corner for Villa on their right hand side taken by Dini into the near post pushed out by Flecken it bounced awkwardly right in front of him at the near post nobody got a touch but he managed to smuggle it clear with the aid of his defenders he's gone back out to look at Dini on that right hand side he took the corner initially looks for McGinn Brentford with an awkward clearance across their own 18 yard line and it's picked up by Leon Bailey on this left-hand side for Villa. Tries to find a teammate at the edge of the area, but Brentford win it back. And then Burmo sprinting forward over the halfway line. Vissa to his left. Damsgaard in space ahead of him. And back came Morgan Rogers with a fantastic challenge to win possession back. And Brentford once again thwarted on the counter-attack. Well, one and Burmo gets his head up. Damsgaard made a brilliant run out to the left-hand side. As you said there, it's Morgan Rogers just making sure he's doing his de defensive duties. Just came back, shouldered and went off the ball, took it off of him, got Villa back into possession. That was a brilliant opportunity for Brentford on the counter-attack there. It's just Mbouama's um, got to get his head up a little bit quicker. Aston Villa nil, Brentford nil. We played 25 minutes on TalkSport 2 on game day exclusive. Here is Esri Concer for Villa. Tucking the ball out to the right-hand side for John McGinn. Level with the edge of the area. Back in field it goes to Tielemans at the centre of the half. With Concert just to his right. Tielemans goes left to Pau Torres who's pushed forward in this attack. 25 yards out. Faced up by Matthias Jensen. Hits the ball against Jensen as he tried to thread the ball along the deck. But Villa will have it back. Burton nil, Oxford 1 in League 1. Oxford starting the day just outside the playoffs on goal difference they lead through Mark Harris at Burton who are not safe only one point clear of the relegation zone themselves the Brewers in League One nil nil here with Villa in possession Luca Dinia in possession working it back to Pau Torres and further back it goes to Diego Carlos earlier ball into the box looking for the run of Dinia took a touch off Russ left did it has been given us a goal kick in actual fact by Michael Salisbury elsewhere Mansfield nil Crawley two in League 2 now, second place Mansfield trailing at the one call Nicholas Sarula with the second for Crawley. Tranmere 1, Warsaw 0. No one in 3 for Tranmere as they are in front against Warsaw who are only 3 points off Crawley just outside the playoff zone. 
and Charlton won Barnsley nil. Charlton 10 and beaten since Nathan Jones has come in and they lead fifth place Barnsley through Alfie May with his 22nd goal of the season, League One's leading scorer. Stoke nil, West Brom won in the old Staffordshire Derby as it used to be known. Mikey Johnston for West Brom. Here's Brentford coming forward on a rare foray with Sergio Reguilón down the left-hand side, crosses deep to the far post, over the head of Vissa, and Villa will bring it clear in their left-back position. Up it goes to Watkins. He was caught by Zanka as he tried to turn inside his own half. Free kick to Aston Villa as Doncaster go 2-0 up at Morecambe in League 2. Luke Mollyn who gets his second of the afternoon. 0-0 here, here's Perry Groves. I bet Ivan Tony was just looking at that little passage of play there from Brentford where Reguilón went down the left hand side outside concert got to the byline dinked up the far post it was this who was on the far post it was obviously a lot smaller than Ivan Tony that's the sort of area that Ivan Tony would have come into being their big strong centre forward Morgan Rogers for Villa looking for Watkins he's gone down again under pressure from Aya this time and now Villa have a free kick in an excellent position 25 yards out to the left of centre favouring a right footed effort on goal Rogers to stay down having fed the ball in field to Rogers, who was caught by Christopher Ayer, who can't believe that the free kick has been given against him, but given it has been by Michael Salisbury, big chance for Villa here at 0-0. Well, Ayer is pleading that he actually took the ball before he took Ollie Watkins. I don't think he did. It was really good play from Morgan Rogers on the left-hand side, just cutting in, rolling into Ollie Watkins. It's just one of those ones where you get yourself across the centre-half, you just toe poke it with your right foot. Watkins knows that Ayer's coming in. Ayer just slides him down. Michael Salisbury, the referee, quite rightly gives the free kick. Now he gets his little spray out. Just paces, he's ten paces away from the ball. Brentford play is going to be about level with a penalty spot inside their own area. And there's a one, two, three, four, at least a four-man, five-man wall now. And Villa players standing next to it to obscure Mark Flecken's view. Would you like to see the referee be a little bit more artistic than just do the straight white line there's a little screen on a bit of a sure there's a referee somewhere in the world that does that there is a draft excluder going behind the wall as well Vitaly Janolt the unlucky player that's happened to lie flat on his back never ever seen the draft excluder be hit from a free kick not ever. yet but it's there and Luca Dinia who can hit free kicks I've seen him score brilliant goals for Everton from free kicks and Douglas Ruiz are the two players standing over it he got Tielemans just to their right at the edge of the D and Dinia will leave it get it back from Douglas Ruiz and as he struck it out flew Sergio Reguilón who celebrates getting the ball clear like he's won the World Cup out comes Martinez and wins the ball back for Villa on halfway Shrewsbury equalised at Portsmouth in League One that's 1-1 one -one there Jordan Shipley 0-0 nil -nil here at Villa Park if you're just tuning into game day exclusive Aston Villa firing the ball into the box Douglas Ruiz with almost a cross shot but it was comfortably dealt with by Mark Flecken he holds on to it and it stays goalless a little funny dance. Sergio Reguilón has obviously made a decent block, hasn't he, from the free kick. He's an as well, but no need to do a lap of honour. Basically, you just blocked a shot, and that is it. Just looking at Aston Villa, obviously, he's just coming up to half an hour play. Leon Bailey's not getting a lot of success over on Villa's right-hand side. Morgan Rogers not a lot of success on the step. Why don't they swap? Swap over, so bring Leon Bailey over here so he's on his left foot and maybe he can go on the outside. I know Morgan Rogers is left foot, but it might just give the two fullbacks for Brentford, Royal Slava and Reguilón, just something else to think about, you know, because this is the way they've been set up, they know the way they're really going to play, and managers surprise me sometimes where they don't try and just mix it up a little bit. In the Championship, as you heard earlier, Ipswich lost at Norwich, Leeds are losing at Coventry, and Leicester are in front against Birmingham at the King Power, Kiernan Dewsbury Hall, so as it stands, Leicester are going back to the top of the championship, a point clear of Ipswich and two clear of Leeds if things stay as they are. Villa in possession inside their own half with Yuri Tillemans laying the ball back to his goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez and Bermo thinking about closing him down, very low drilled clearance straight onto the head of Ayer who just gave Watkins a nudge in the back but he was allowed to continue play but Villa have won it back Douglas Louise looking left and right for an option as he gets to the midway point of the half plays it out to this near side the left and Luca Dinia chance for a first time cross not taken gets it back again and lays it off to Pau Torres Dinia again a bit of frustration down to the yeah. Aston Villa fans can't you where Douglas Louise has a ball in the middle of the park and basically he should be rolling out a lot quicker to his right hand side to Conza 
and the Villa fans can see the pass and Douglas Reed decided to run and run and run that gave Brentford a chance to get their team shape back 32 minutes gone on Talk Sport 2 still goalless at Villa Park McGinn for the hosts lays it back to concert midway point of the half just to the right of centre edges towards the edge of the penalty area they have to lay it back again Tielemans trying to set play up this time squares it to the inside left position and Pau Torres infield for Douglas Lewis again Brentford everybody back behind the ball in their own defensive third out to the right hand side of the area Leon Bailey can't get past Damsgaard Bailey will hold on to it again give it back infield to Esri Concert Concert can't see an option in the box to cross into so he lays it backwards of square to Tiedemans he gives it back to Concert back out to the right wing and John McGinn down to the byline Leon Bailey trying to win the corner as he won it off Nathan Collins indeed he has been his third corner of the half as Wolves take the lead against West Ham our first Premier League goal of the three o'clock has gone in at Molyneux Pablo Sarabia with a penalty in that game not far from here and Villa Park where Villa have a corner to be taken by Leon Bailey plenty in the six yard box and a few players massed around the penalty spot and Michael Salisbury just having a word with a bit of pushing that he sees happening between Diego Carlos and Zanka it's a right load of shoving right in front of Flecken and we'll see what well when Bailey can take the corner because the ball's moving off the, uh, the corner quadrant because of the high winds well, Diogo Carlos is obviously trying to block Flecken in. You've got Morgan Rogers in front of Flecken as well. So Flecken's got to make sure that he doesn't get involved with that group of four players. In here front comes of the corner, and it's a push on the area, and the foul has gone against Diego Carlos. That's exactly what we were looking at before the corner kick was taken. Diego Carlos and Zanka getting involved at the near post right in front of the goalkeeper, and the free kick was given against Diego Carlos, who was in front of Zanka. And the Villa fans thought that Zanka brought or hauled down Diogo Carlos, but the referee saw it differently, nil-nil. To be fair, Diogo Carlos hasn't done a lot wrong. As you said, it was Zanka that was quite clever dance because he made sure he collapsed. He collapsed away from the ball that made Diogo Carlos go on top of him. Michael Salisbury is obviously aware of what was going on. Charlton won, Barnsley won. Adam Phillips equalises for Barnsley. Cardiff nil, hole one in the championship. Hole lead through Fabio Carvalho. And Stockport, the lead two leaders, now two up at Sutton United. And a second for Paddy Madden for the Hatters this afternoon. You're up to date on TalkSport 2. Just over ten minutes to half time here at Villa Park. Villa have had so much territory, but so few chances. Nil-nil. Rogers out to this near side in Luca Digne. hits the ball against the arm of Matthias Jensen spotted by about 30,000 people as you heard handball given free kick Northampton are in front at six fields against Carlisle that could be Carlisle done and dusted and relegated to League 2 today Kieran Bowie for Northampton who are just too far away to really get involved in the playoff picture anymore now a foul on Watkins and there's going to be a a yellow card here I think the totting up procedure is going to work against Christopher Ayer here or is it just going to be a final public warning yeah no more it's not a yellow card yet for Christopher Ayer but the next foul he makes he will get a card of Michael Salisbury nil nil things to be three strikes and you're out because that's the, the second time that Christopher Ayer has just come in from the side of Ollie Watkins it's a brilliant first touch actually because it was pinged into him by Paul Torres just make sure he'd open his body up Christopher Ayer just comes in sides and down now if you're Ollie Watkins, you'll be saying to John McGinn, to Tillyman, the next four or five passes you get, get it into me, get it into my feet, because I've got him on toast now. Grimsby 1, Newport 0, and our sincere condolences go to David Artel, the Grimsby manager who lost his father in the last couple of days. And they lead Grimsby through Danny Rose at Blundell Park. And they're one of those teams just above who dreaded drop zone into the National League. Leighton Orient 1, Cheltenham 0 back in League 1. And Ethan Galbraith has given the O's the lead. Dinya lobs the ball back somewhat awkwardly to his goalkeeper. Emiliano Martinez has to wait until it's in his six-yard box before it bounces so he can control it. And then great skill from Pau Torres to do a great turn on Matthias Jensen and play the ball into midfield for John McGinn. Still inside his own half. Now Douglas Louise spots Concert in bags of space on the far right hand side. He just lost the ball in the sun 
for a moment, Ponsa, but now he can make strides into the Brentford half, urged on, as you can hear from the Villa faithful, wanting a bit more urgency and a bit more tempo in Villa's forward play. It's up to Morgan Rogers inside the D, sets himself for a shot on his left, it's well blocked by Ayer, but squirms out to this near side for a Villa throw, nil-nil. Brilliant block there for Christoph. I uh, just made sure he's gone full length, slid along the ground because Morgan, Morgan Rogers just gone into the D and into the 18 yard box, tried to get it onto his left foot. Great little ball into him from Yuri Tillemans. But I got the block in, and that's given Brentford a chance to get themselves back into that 5 3 2 shape again. Which they have right now as Villa have the ball back once more to Diego Carlos just beyond the centre circle. Concert to his right. Rogers calling for it inside the area, but it's gone out to the right hand side of McGinn. Midway point of the half. Back in field it goes to Concert, needing to find that avenue to get through into the penalty area. McGinn swirls a crossover from the right over the head of Rogers. Dinya brings it down at the byline, left hand side, works it back to Louise at the edge of the area. Can't take a shot, he was blocked by Matthias Jensen, now Tielemans takes over, sends it out to McGinn, right hand corner of the penalty area, clips it in with his left, headed towards goal by Watkins, and it's in! Oh, Ollie Watkins scores against his old club, Mark Flecken did his best to keep it out, but Ollie Watkins scores once again against his old club to keep Villa's push for a top four finish alive here. They've been pushing and probing and desperate for an opening. And finally, McGinn's cross, Watkins header, Villa 1, Brentford 0. Well, that's elementary, my dear Watkins. He said Villa pushing and probing, comes out to John McGinn on the right-hand side, gets on his left foot. It's the first time there's been a cross of any quality into the 18-yard box. Ollie Watkins just makes sure he gets in between Brentford's two centre-halves, heads the ball downwards. Just goes down to Flecken's left-hand side. As you said there, Flecken just scrambling, just trying to crawl it back off the goal line. Fantastic header from Molly Watkins in off the post. Flecken tries to pick it out. Michael Swansby quite rightly points to the centre circle. And you have to say, Dance, that Villa took their time, didn't they, to break Brentford down. So they've been nice and patient. Fantastic ball in from John McGinn. Brilliant header from Molly Watkins. Goal number 17 of this Premier League season for Ollie Watkins and he didn't celebrate wildly against his former club but it will mean so much that it keeps Villa's hopes of finishing ahead of Tottenham we don't play till tomorrow evening that's live on Talk Sport as well at tea time against Nottingham Forest a bonus game for you this weekend on Talk Sport 2 but he has given Villa the advantage with six minutes to the break. But Brentford have won a free kick just inside the Villa half of the field. And now Brentford will presumably have to change their tactics a little bit from what they've been doing in this opening half an hour or so. Matthias Jensen ready to take the free kick. But again, the referee just looking at some pushing and shoving just outside the penalty area. Villa holding a pretty high line. This free kick's only... 10 yards inside the Villa half of the field to the right of centre and Villa are holding their line about I don't know 25 yards out almost really compressing the play Jensen with a right footed chip to the left hand side of the area up goes Ayer flicks it across the face of goal and hammered clear by Diego Carlos and Burmo should get there first but an awkward header straight up in the air under pressure from McGinn somehow and Burmo's kept it in play on that left hand side and then it's put out of play by Yuri Tillemans 1-0 Villa and they've finally confirmed Watkins is the goal scorer on the public address system I think they were just waiting to see that the ball had completely crossed the line because Flecken did clear it but it Bailey put it in at the second attempt but it was over yeah it just come off the inside of Flecken's left hand post to say he was scrambled across right to pour it out of his left palm but we could tell from here dance the ball across the line he said there about Brentford you know sort of changing their approach well here's a long throw from Matthias Jensen into the box Zanka goes up to try and hook it back across the face of goal there's a Brentford player down holding his head I think it's Nathan Collins play continues Collins is back on his feet Villa have it back and they've presented it back to Jensen who lobs it up to the edge of the area Zanka is still there up from the back for the visitors really awkward passage of play lots of head tennis eventually it's won back by Brentford but then wasteful pass from Nathan Collins Douglas Louise 
tries to skip away from two challenges and it's going to be a yellow card for Brentford but the anger you can hear from Villa fans again they think that play should have been allowed to continue because Villa were building a very nice counter attack and might have had players over but in the end it's a yellow card for Mikkel Damsgaard and it's a free kick to Aston Villa in the centre circle 1-0 Villa lead yeah it's a brilliant pirouette wasn't it from Douglas Ruiz in the middle of the park just rolling his sole of his right and left foot over the top of the ball and it was Damsgaard just trying to come in and shoulder him off the ball but he knew full well that Villa had a brilliant breakaway on the 3v3 so Damsgaard's obviously taken one for the team got himself a yellow card and then he's enabled his Brentford teammates to get himself back in their team shape but saying early dance I don't think that Brentford are going to change their approach not until maybe if it's still the same score you know with sort of 20 minutes to go Reggie on went to free kick he was clipped as he approached halfway goals going in elsewhere Forest Green nil MK Dons one in lead two Forest Green in the bottom two Max Dean puts MK Dons ahead who've got designs of their own of a automatic promotion spot Exeter leads Stevenage by a goal to nil in league one four unbeaten Exeter in mid table Stevenage still three points off the playoffs in a really bad trot of form Steve Evans side but they're behind in that game and in Scotland Dundee won Motherwell nil and St Mirren nil Hearts once Sutton United get a goal back in their game at home to Stockport and Portsmouth back in front in League One the leaders lead Shrewsbury by two goals to one Colby Bishop here come Villa 1-0 up with a minute and a half of normal time to go in this first half on TalkSport 2 it's with Douglas Louise and he will lay it back to Pau Torres you're listening to Villa against Brentford on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes, so if you've got a plan, they've got a van. Here's Dinya down to the corner flag, wins a corner of Zanka as he whipped the ball in left-footed off the backside of the Brentford centre-half. Villa have their fourth corner of this first half and lead by goal to nil. He said there, look at just going on the overlap on the left-hand side, get himself to the byline. Zanka came out, made sure he got the block in corner for Aston Villa on the left hand side and taken by Douglas Ruiz and will in swing it with his right foot where the north stand meets the Trinity Road stand that we're sat in down to our left hand side Ruiz raises his left arm then plays it along the dead ball line to McGinn who comes short trying to work it back to the edge of the area for Bowley definitely something off the training ground there didn't work out but it is another Villa corner as Charlton regained the lead at the Valley in League 1 against Barnsley 2-1 another goal for Alfie May make that 23 for the season and Douglas Louise preparing to take a corner this time John McGinn's got somebody watching him in Vitaly Janelt to stop that short corner routine coming off again for Villa yeah, just trying to mix it up a little bit Douglas Louise just rolling it into John McGinn along the byline McGinn trying to pick out Leon Bailey gets the block this time I think Douglas Louise will miss out John McGinn just moving into two minutes of added time in comes the corner it's deflected behind for a goal kick it was a Villa player that went to the near post Consul I think who got the final touch and it's a goal kick to Brentford Villa have a one goal advantage then as we go into these couple of added minutes Perry Groves yeah, it was a good whipped in cross actually from Douglas Louise from the corner just whipping it to near post Morgan Rogers getting himself inside Christopher Ayer at the near post just got stuck underneath his feet went out for goal kick well they're trying to be too clever in their own defensive third Brentford and they've given the ball away and presented Villa with a throw Rogers darting down this near touchline wins yet another corner as Zanka sticks out a foot and they were trying to be so clever the likes of Janelt and Ayer inside their own defensive third but it was poor play in the end Hull are 2-0 up incidentally at Cardiff another goal for Fabio Carvalho it wouldn't want to be Ayer and Janelt at half time if Aston Villa end up scoring from this corner kick because you've got a minute to go make sure you play off the front men so just try to play out from the back gets the, Rog, uh, Rogers gets the block in tries to get the cross gets blocked at the near post Douglas will now whip it in again to that near post area right footed along the dead ball line once again to McGinn they had McG uh, Yano at his back and it's clipped to the far post looking for Watkins the goal scorer Bailey tries a volley from the right hand side kept in play by Watkins and he's won another corner why Brentford didn't try and clear the ball quickly I don't know they just all stood and watched as the ball bounced on the dead ball line Villa have another corner well, Bailey needs to chalk his boot because as the ball's dropped out of the air he's tried to 
hit a right foot volley, slice it completely, that'll go down on his stats as keeping possession. Goes to Ollie Watkins, he does exactly the same thing and slices it. I think it was Nathan Collins who went out and got the block in. Another corner for Aston Villa, this time on their right hand side. To be taken by Luca Dinyat. We're in the that second minute of added time. There won't be much more to add on at the end of this half. Swindon go 2 0 up at Barrow in League Two. Dinyat looking to take this corner kick. He's raising his right arm, left footed in swinger to come. Referee blows his whistle. In it comes from Dinyat. Good whip on the centre. Good catch by the keeper at his near post. Notts County 1, Harrogate nil in lead 2, Macaulay Langstaff gets his 25th of the season. Birmingham have equalised to Leicester, 1-1, Jay Stansfield, and the half-time whistle has gone at Aston Villa. And the home side lead by a goal to nil, and the visitors are incensed that they weren't allowed to break downfield on the counter-attack. The two minutes of minimum stoppage time were up. But there's at least five or six Brentford players remonstrating with Michael Salisbury why he elected to blow the half-time whistle then. Well, he blew it because he saw that there was enough time that had elapsed. Ollie Watkins with the only goal of the game after what was a very, very tight and tense first half hour or so where uh, Brentford were denying Villa space coming forward. But eventually John McGinn with a cross from the right-hand corner of the area clips him with his left. And the header from Watkins was just too much for Mark Flecken to keep out. And so at the end of the first half, Villa trying their best to consolidate fourth spot with Spurs lurking. It is Villa 1, Brentford 0. Thanks, Faye. Yeah, both sets of players are back out on the pitch in front of us. No changes being made by either manager, it would seem, at the turnaround. Of course, I wouldn't bet against Neil Mopai getting involved at some point for Brentford, but there's still something in it for the Bees, because you know he likes to cause a nuisance whenever he gets involved in a game. But Villa, they're going to keep Tottenham Hotspur at bay. All they can do is keep winning and hope that Spurs slip up with their game in hand against Chelsea or one of their other remaining fixtures if they want to secure a first, fourth spot since 1995-96 season. Good it's say that. It's fantastic air from him. Very impressed. Well, a bit of Aussie crazy train. I think chucking one of the sticks up has gone a little bit too far, though. Thank you very much. I'll run you through the lineups in just a minute. Villa attacking the whole ten to our right in this second half. Leon Bailey early into the box for Ollie Watkins, who got the opener against his old club. Tries to lay it off to the edge of the area for John McGinn. It's got away half clear by Brentford, but Villa have got it back through Esri Concert. The former Brentford man spent a year at Brentford before coming here. He finds Morgan Rogers. Great turn. Brilliant goal. Oh, that's magic from Morgan. Morgan Rogers slams it home inside the first minute of the second half, dropping his shoulder at the edge of the area to buy him some space and then ripping a left-footed shot quite brilliantly past the goalkeeper for his first Aston Villa goal in the Premier League. It is Aston Villa 2, Brentford 0. All Brentford's half-time plans right out of the window because of the brilliance of Morgan Rogers. Brilliant turn from Morgan Rogers on the edge of the 18-yard box. A lovely little ball in from Yuri Tillemans. Just finds him in that inside right position. He just gets it from his right foot onto his left. He says a simulator to Christopher Ayer. He's got a pace to get himself back in the stadium. Then it's can he keep his nerve? Can he keep his composure? Boy, can he, because he just gets on his left foot. He actually gives Mark Flecken in the Brentford goal the eyes dance. He goes as if he's going to go to Mark Flecken's right hand side. He whips it back across him into Flecken's down to his left hand side. Flecken's actually flat footed. Fantastic goal from Morgan Rogers. Really good quality from Yuri Tillman to put Aston Villa 2 up here against Brentford at Villa Park. What a fantastic way to open your account for your new club. Morgan Rogers with a really sumptuous finish to get this second half off to the perfect start for the hosts to line up with Martinez in goal Concert, Carlos, Torres, Dinier McGinn, Louise, Bailey, Tiedemans, Rogers and Watkins Brentford now Flecken in goal Zanka, Ayer, Collins Ruslev, Damsgaard, Janot, Jensen Region, and Bermo and Wissa but as we reminded you Ivan Tony amongst the substitutes but Villa have got their tails up most definitely and it's Bailey again hustling down this near right hand side clips the ball in field just goes beyond Tielemans because of a toe end of a boot from Mikel Damsgaard 
but Douglas Luiz picks it up in the centre of the half. Now Pau Torres takes over and the pattern of the first half once again settling down in the second with Brentford getting everybody behind the ball as much as they can. But they've now got a two goal deficit, the visitors. And they'll be looking very nervously over their shoulder at the relegation battle beneath them. Here's Diego Carlos on the halfway line. Clips the ball left for Villa for Pau Torres. Torres looking for the run of Dinya. Just overhit the pass and Flecken swiftly out to the right hand side of his box. The Brentford keeper to grab hold of it. 2 0 Villa. Yeah, this is a little bit too straight there from Pau Torres. Try to at least look at Dinya over on that left hand side. Face it um, before the game, dancing about Brentford having their sleep expert in. Must be working because they were proper dozy at the beginning of the second half. Because Thomas Frank will be absolutely apoplectic with rage because they completely went to sleep. It, just before that dance, it went in too easy to Ollie Watkins, didn't it, from the kickoff? Yes. Into the 18 yard box, and Brentford didn't wake up. Reggion darts in field for Brentford into the centre of the half. Visser lets the ball run across his body, clips it into the box, looking for the run of Rostler, but it was a good interception by Luca Dinia. Looked a good ball at first, but here come Villa on the counter attack. Three on three if they play it right. McGinn spreads it right to Bailey. Lovely ball. Bailey's got Collins isolated, gets into the box, the angle's tightening, pulls it across the face, he got a fleck and somehow holds onto it at his near post to keep it at merely 2-0 to Aston Villa. What a ball from John McGinn from left to right, just pinged it out to this right hand side of Aston Villa into Leon Bailey, this time he actually goes on the outside of Nathan Collins but he just pushes it a bit too far, that enables to fleck him to get his angles right at his near post, Leon Bailey then tries to cut it back across and Flecken goes into the long barrier stance he just blocks it with his feet and manages to get hold of the ball that's Perry Groves alongside me Ian Tanter here at Villa Park so Everton lead against Burnley through that late Dominic Calvert-Lewin strike somewhat fortuitous I'm told at the end of the first half Wolves wipe up against West Ham no other goals in the Premier League 3 o'clock kickoffs to tell you about and with that goal for Villa Remember that puts them on 62 points, five clear of Spurs, but Spurs have two games in hand. The first of those is tomorrow tea time against Nottingham Forest. That's live on Talksport. Six o'clock kickoff for that game, and then the Champions League kicks in during the week with Manchester City, Real Madrid, and a great victory to set them up for that trip to Madrid by winning 4-2 at Crystal Palace at lunchtime. You heard it live on Talksport. Incidentally, at the other end of the table. Everton go above Brentford with the lead that they've got at the moment. So Brentford will be down to 16th. And if Forrest were to win that game against Tottenham tomorrow, they'd go above Brentford as well to leave them just above the bottom three. Luton currently nil-nil with Bournemouth. I'm sure we'll hear Faker or others screaming from the studio if Luton take the lead in that game at Kenny. Here it's 2-0 to Aston Villa. We play five minutes of the second half. Slightly errant pass from Villa allows Burmo to get away down the right. He's taken down by Pau Torres. Free kick level with the edge of the area for Brentford. And you sense, Perry Groves, that the Bees have got to strike back quickly. Yeah, because they've had no sting at all today, dance of the day. Ivan Tony obviously is on the bench. I'll be amazed. It was just coming up to 52 minutes being played. But if Thomas Frank doesn't put him on because they've just been very passive in the first half. Second half to come out, just fell asleep right from the kickoff Morgan Rogers scores a brilliant goal with his left foot a minute just after half time and at the minute you can't see Brentford getting themselves back into this game let's see what this set piece can bring for the visitors as John Duran comes out to warm up for Aston Villa ditto Nico Zaniolo right in front of our commentary position the free kick is Brentford's level with the Villa penalty area on the right hand side right next to the touchline in front of those travelling Brentford fans who've had very little sh to shout about so far this afternoon Jensen and Burmo standing over it Jensen put so much on it it's just gone straight out of play on this near side for a throw in he got out the driver when he needed a 7 iron throw into Villa and Villa lead 2-0 on Talksport 2 yeah and he needs to take his uh driver's boots off as well dad to be fair because that was a, a tonka touch from a free kick really where, he just, where he just completely smashed it over everybody who's in the 18 yard box and goes out for throwing for villa on their right hand side like the great 70s reference from Barry groves if anybody's like you can google it yeah tonka toys now you're taking me back 
Villa toying with Brentford at the moment really as they win another free kick McGinn is taken down by Reggie on this time uh, why Bissa forgive me and it's going to be a yellow card for him Forest Green nil MK Dons 2 Alex Gilby with a second for MK Dons which opens the door for Colchester Perry if they can get something against Wrexham but that's currently nil-nil at the sold out job serve so this a book for that challenge on McGinn Villa have a free kick yeah just this coming in a, a little bit late on John McGinn you know the Colch United against Wrexham games is going to be 1-1 that's what the Cowley brothers do <laughs> I think they've had about 9 1-1s haven't they since they've taken over but currently in the bottom two in League Two at the start of the day Colchester United Brentford win the ball back here. We played eight minutes of the second half. Villa in command. Brentford trying to respond as Jensen tries to release and Burmo down the right hand side. Good pace from the returning and Burmo whips the ball into the box. Decent delivery, but it's well claimed at his near post by Martinez. Visser was in behind, but didn't make the run in the area that Burmo might have wanted with that ball in. Back in the arms of the Argentine World Cup winner. Villa 2, Brentford 0. Yeah, Martinez isn't really in any hurry, obviously, to distribute the ball with Villa comfortably 2 new up. Brentford had a great chance on the current attack there. Jensen just releasing him, Wormo down that right-hand side. He's got to just have better quality on his cross. Because, as you said there, oh, Jan out with a terrible back pass intended for Flecken. It's shanked off the outside of his boot for a Villa corner at the Holt end. 2-0. To be fair to Yen out there, he looked like he had cricket pads on rather than shin pads. Oh dear. Luton nil, Bournemouth won. I can hear Faker others groaning their disappointment from here. Marcus Tavernier has put Bournemouth ahead at Kenilworth Road. That helps Brentford out, frankly, in their bid to steer clear of trouble. So a corner kick to Villa at the Holt end, where it meets the Trinity Road stand down far to our right hand side McGinn's going to take this left footed in swinger from the Scott Flecken has to punch it away but there was a push on a Brentford player inside the box so a free kick goes the way of the visitors Bolton take the lead at Bristol Rovers in the league one Aaron Collins with the goal for the Trotters starting the day in third four points off Derby County who don't play today but Aaron Collins scored against his old side it is for 750,000 that's a, a transfer fee again that's going back to the 1990s isn't it 750 grand yeah and that's 14 goals for Collins as well Leeds United are 2-0 down <laughs> <coughs> excuse me at Coventry City had you right there American striker adds to Ellis Sims first half strike those two strikers are in such good form for Coventry right now and they lead Leeds 2-0 it's unbelievable from Leeds United they're unbeaten in 2024 play 15-1-13 drawn 2 they have five clean sheets in the last seven away games Coventry 2-0 up so a Villa here against Brentford and Leon Bailey darting down this near touchline once again tries to squeeze in between two defenders goes down inside the box no penalty McGinn takes over at the dead ball line gets it back to Bailey who's back on his feet Get, takes a shot at goal and it deflects away off Nathan Collins and goes all the way back into the Villa half of Martinez to retrieve but Leon Bailey has had a bit of space to operate in down this right hand side of the last couple of minutes 2-0 yeah he just couldn't quite fashion the ball onto his left foot and then when he did to be fair Nathan Collins and Christopher Ayer made sure that they got the block in I'm just looking at Thomas Frank there's no changes down. planned it's all Villa subs that are warming up well, in front of us I mean, Diaby, Zaniolo and Duran are being warming up yeah, he has to list Ivan Tony is you know carrying a bigger injury than what we've been told he has because we were told that he's got a slight hip injury this makes no sense because Brentford have got to try and get themselves back into the game they haven't really been a threat going forward well here's Visser for Brentford left hand side skips inside Tielemans and gets into the area just chips the ball goalwards and it's headed behind by Diogo Carlos for what I'm pretty sure is Brentford's first corner of the afternoon 57 minutes gone you're listening to Aston Villa 2 Brentford nil on TalkSport 2 with now don't forget the with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Brighton versus Arsenal live today contract free with a now membership search now sports Crawley Town 3-0 up at Mansfield that's second against seventh and Danilo Orsi 
has his 17th of the season to put Crawley three up. And Hibbs wants from Johnston, one in Scotland. Corner kick then for Brentford at the north stand end to our left. Matthias Jensen for take it right footed. Two players are moving away from a short corner option for him. He whips it in. Again, too much power on that. Kept it away from all his teammates. Headed out the penalty area but retrieved by Rursleff who gives it back to Fleck and the keeper who has to drill it out to this near side looking for Jensen but it was a good defensive header from Dinier to put it out for a throw Jensen takes it quickly for Brentford Reggion in support heads for the byline left hand side good pullback up goes Visser flicks off the top of his head brought down by Damsgaard drives it in and Zankers turned it home from six yards out to give Brentford hope scuffed finish but Zanka won't care because he's produced the arrears and for the first time Brentford look menacing coming forward in this second half and they get a goal from it Zanka the unlikely scorer making it Villa 2 Brentford 1 there's yeah, really good play from Wigland down the left hand side just getting to the byline just make sure he's dinking it up then as the ball comes out Vista gets his head to it but it comes off the top of his head it just falls to Damsgaard Damsgaard just makes sure that he actually tries to get a shot in he shanks his shot and then he shanks it straight to Zanka and Zanka actually shanks it into the back of the net because he's gone with his right foot dance he's missed it completely he's hit his standing foot come off his shin and just roll past it Martinez give him absolutely no chance whatsoever so Brentford have got themselves well back in this game first goal for two seasons for Matthias Jorgensen better known as Zanka and that will give Brentford a real lift as we approach the hour mark and the Brentford fans opposite us in the Doug Ellis stand certainly revitalised by that Zanka goal Villa 2 Brentford 1 Mansfield nil, Crawley 4 now in League 2 and the fourth goal that Cloudy Lolos oh and Colchester 1 Wrexham nil. Perry John Akinde offside cancelled out at the job serve now it's yeah, we are in a VAR free zone in the EFL. Dance. It's going to be one all. We know it's going to be one all. Well, it's not going to be one all here. Villa 2, Brentford 1 is the scoreline. Carlo, Cardiff get a goal back against Hull City. Carl and Grant makes it Cardiff 1, Hull 2 in the championship. And here on the left-hand side, Reguilon does well to keep it in play. Gets it given back to him by Damsgaard and Visser. Good triangle of play down this near left-hand side for Brentford and now Reggion gets away onside decent ball into the area and Burmo volleys it home what a goal from Brandon Burmo back in the Brentford starting lineup and expertly volleys it home and can you believe it within two minutes Brentford have come from 2-0 down to level the game at Villa Park extraordinary comeback and Brandon Burmo gets the equaliser Reggion with a very neat cross but a really cleverly steered volley home from Brian and Burbo to make it Villa 2, Brentford 2. That football is absolutely nuts. Trust me, it's crazy. Brentford weren't in this game. And all of a sudden, they're 2 0 down. They're back in here at 2 2. Brilliant cross from Regalon from the left hand side. And Wermo from the centre of the six yard box, as he watched it just come across his shoulder, he's opened his body out and he's just right footed it. Give Martin's absolute no chance. It was agility from Wormo, athleticism. So he's opened his body out and he's followed it past Martinez to put Brentford bang back in this game at 2 2 at Villa Park. And that's his eighth goal of the season, Brian and Burmo, to put him out front as the B's top scorer in the Premier League this season. And you did not see this scoreline coming five minutes ago. But here we are at two apiece. It was mad, Dan. It is. It is. Like if I said, like, you looked at that and you thought, oh, Brentford had it with a threat going forward. They're 2 0 down. They concede straight after half time from Morgan Rogers and all of a sudden just a lucky goal obviously from Zanka it was a shanked shot from Damsgaard Zanka no shot from oh, Damsgaard Damsgaard, right. like Damsgaard the shanked shot and then it goes to Zanka miss it completely off his standing foot but the second goal was one of the highest quality Brentford again coming forward and Burma goes down in the area from the cross in from Bissell on this left hand side Stoke nil, West Brom 2 incidentally in the championship Jed Wallace has got a second at the bet 365 for the Baggies and 2-2 two -two here at Villa Park and Unai Emery and Aston Villa have got to start all over again and I'm, Emery stands at the edge of his technical area arms folded not impressed not impressed at all Cardiff won hole 3 Holly re-established their two goal cushion Jaden Philogene 
with the third four hole. Got Villa connections, JJ and Pelagin Billis. Tammy one, Warsaw two. Warsaw go in front to Taylor Allen, only three points off Crawley Warsaw still have designs on a playoff place the Sadlers and Burton nil Oxford 2 in League 1 Mark Harris has his second Oxford trying to get back into the playoffs and get above Lincoln who've been on an incredible run although they're 0-0 at Reading at the moment 15 unbeaten Lincoln 2-2 Two -two here strong challenge on halfway from Yanel to win the ball back temporarily for Brentford bit of head tennis around the middle of the half Vista wins it back and Burmos goes down and he's been fouled by Torres and it's all going Brentford's way at the moment extraordinary last five minutes or so where the game is completely turned on its head and now Brentford have a free kick dead centre 30 yards out at 2-2 just an unnecessary foul there from Cal Torres on Brian and Burmo so I think the Villa Park is actually in shock dance because I think most of the fans in Aston Villa fans in here today I actually thought the game was done and dusted but you just never tell with football that the momentum can change in a heartbeat it's exactly what's happened with Brentford scoring two goals in their two minutes now it's a bit nervy for Aston Villa and Brentford have got a free kick in a really dangerous position well there's plenty of yardage to get the ball up and down here it's a good 25 yards out I would say big goal for Sheffield Wednesday who lead at QPR by a goal to nil in the championship Jeji Gasama for the Owls they lead at Loftus Road that's got massive implications at the bottom with Plymouth winning last night against Rotherham trying to drag a few more teams back in to the relegation mix Sheffield Wednesday who are in the bottom three at the start of the day second bottom that's a big goal for them we've just seen two big goals for Brentford to get themselves back level and now they've got this free kick Damsgaard may well look favourite to hit it and Burmo standing right next to the ball the wall is stationed just inside the 18 yard box for Aston Villa and Burmo steps back from the ball will he drive it or will it be Damsgaard it is Damsgaard right footed deflected and over the wall for a corner kick and that wrong footed Emiliano Martinez but sailed over the crossbar for a Brentford corner 2-2 yeah, to be fair, it was a really good block from Diego Carlos, who's in the middle of the Aston Villa wall. The damn guard just trying to whip it up and over the wall. Brian Wormo just going over to take the corner on Brentford's right-hand side, over to in front of all the Brentford fans. He's trying to whip them up into a frenzy. And they responded. And he's just having a little private conflab with Matis Jensen on that far side, spotting the ball down where the... Doug Ellis stand meets the north stand be a left footed in swing a zonal marking from Villa inside their six yard box and Brentford are having players making runs from the edge of the area Ayers in the box Visser all alone around the penalty spot now they're all moving into the six yard box together as Mbomo swings it into the near post takes the touch of Tielemans and goes behind for another Brentford corner 2-2 all they're trying to do dance Brentford from Mbomo's in swing and corner is great mayhem you can sit there Zanka, Ayer and Collins were all at the far post there's no, not one Brentford player in the six-yard box. You said uh, Villa have gone zoning right along. But I just thought that they made their run a little bit too early because as the ball come in, they're all standing in the six-yard box. Just got to make sure they time their run a little bit better. And Burmo again with a corner from the same area where the Doug Ellis meets the North Stand. Whipped into the near post. Martinez punches clear. Straight back out to Burmo on that far side who keeps it in play. Now Jensen swings a first time crossing. Awkward headed clear as Nathan Collins runs into Pau Torres. Driven into the deck by Reguillon. And it's held by Martinez who bolts it out over arm looking for McGinn. But it will skip out of play for a Brentford throw. Two apiece here at Villa Park midway through the second half. For the latest odds, head to William Hill, the official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage. Right now, you can get Villa to win this game at 11-8. to The draw, 5-4. to A Brentford win, you can get at 4-1. to That's all thanks to William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. What were you saying about 1-1 at Colchester? Paul Mullins just equalised for Wrexham with his 19th it's of it's the season. It's on. So Wrexham are level. Remember, they started the day in third in League Two in the last automatic promotion no, spot. Villa are shell shocked, Dad. They are. Completely shell shocked because obviously Burnford getting themselves back into the 2 2. They've started to sit a bit deep. They've completely lost their shape. The momentum's all with Brentford. Now here's Reggion. Across the face of goal. Chucked away by Visser. Brentford are in front. Staggering comeback from the Bees as they bid to Port Clear of trouble. 
Yeah, and this is steers the ball in from the yard out. Reggie on again, the creator, and Aston Villa's hopes of a top four finish are in serious jeopardy now. Once again, they're trailing at home. They've lost three at home this calendar year already. Surely it can't be four. Aston Villa two, Brentford three. Dance. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here because it's brilliant play from Regulon down the left-hand side. He takes the ball out of the air from a fantastic crossfield ball from Jensen. As he just brings the ball down, he makes sure that I'm going to put it into a dangerous area. Exactly what he does with his left foot, rolls it across the six-yard box. And there's Visser completely unmarked, three yards out, just taps it into an empty net. Fantastic play from Brentford. Quality all round from Jensen to Regulon. Regulon across the box. This will make sure he's in the centre forward position. Just taps the ball home. This, uh, this is one of the greatest turnarounds, Dan, I think I've ever seen when I've been commentating because... It's come Brentford, from nowhere. Yeah, Brentford were completely out of it at 2-0. And then they get the goal, which is lucky with Janka. Now they completely turn the game on its head to go 3-2 up. Amazing. The Premier League is absolutely amazing. And even so, Thomas Frank is deep in conversation with his coaching staff, keeping half an eye on the game that's just restarted, just to see if they can manage to see this game out tactically. With a quarter of the game to go now, Johan Visser now joins Brian and Bowen on eight goals for the season as joint top Premier League scorer for the Bees. What a comeback. And they didn't need Ivan Tony to do it either. And the uh, the ball's out of play for a Brentford throw, bang on halfway. And now Villa have to respond. Burton nil, Oxford three, incidentally. Josh Murphy gets Oxford third. And St Mirren nil, Hearts two in the Scottish Premiership. Driven infield by Leon Bailey for Villa. And they've got to recover their composure here. Zaniolo's on for Villa. On as a substitute, but it slid in and won back by Mbermo, who is nudged into by Zaniolo. And that'll be a free kick to the visitors who are 3-2 up here yes. work that one out good tracking back from Byron Buermo make sure he's doing his defensive duties just gets his toe in just nicks it off of Zaniolo well Morgan Rogers was the player that was taken off to allow Zaniolo to come on maybe those sleep pods that Brentford were sleeping in sort of only kick in after 45 minutes of matches well perhaps 46 Aston Villa's got a sleep coach and theirs kicks in after 45 minutes after matches because they they were cruising that's the middle of cruising dance weren't they totally cruising. well you heard how happy this place was it was contentment wasn't it yep complete right. contentment around Villa Park now anxiety abounds apart from the fans in the lower tier of the Degelis can directly opposite our commentary position because those Brentford fans are deliriously happy well, are they going to see their Brentford team create history because they've never, ever won an away league game? That's right. Really they've never come here and won, and they're 3-2 up. And Reggion again is starting down this left-hand side. Got to give Sergio Reggion credit. He's really worked hard this half on loan from Tottenham. Had a hamstring injury that's hampered making more regular appearances for the Bees. But he's been terrific. That's, I've got to say, and I know I keep harping on about it, about wingers going on the outside all three of Brentford goals mm -hmm. have been from Sergio Reguilón who's playing his left wing back going on the outside with his left foot and whipping quality crosses in the first one where he whips it in this gets his little headers in it goes to Dam's guard who shanks his shot and then comes off Zanka's shin the second one is a brilliant cross with his left foot fantastic way from Brian and Bromo the third one again it's a cross for ball from Jensen to Reguilón and again he picks the right pass right across the six yard box Mr. taps it in now Watkins scrapping for possession with Ayer. And Ayer got the better of him. There's a, a Brentford player who's gone down inside his own half. It is Reguillon, who just stretched his leg to try and get to that most recent cross down at the dead ball line and might have done himself an injury. Meantime, Stoke have got a goal back against West Brom. Stoke won West Brom to the brilliantly named Million Manhoof gets the goal back for the Potters. So in the Premier League, just to let you know how the table sits, Villa still fourth, but they'll be on 59 points, Perry. Spurs, 57 points, but they'll have not one but two games in hand now on Aston Villa. And at the bottom, Brentford, with the three points they're getting here, they're going to go above Crystal Palace, having played a game more, onto 31 points. And that will be nine clear of Luton, who are losing at the moment at home to Bournemouth. 
so it's going very very well from the Brentford point of view Luton are trailing at home Burnley are 1-0 down at Everton and they've had Dara O'Shea sent off as well in that game Greg going to have to come off for a moment because he's had treatment so it's very much working in Brentford's favour this afternoon at the bottom goals from Zanka and Bermo and Visser have turned this game on its head but one stage they were just above Nottingham Forest didn't they that's on right 28 points if Forest would win their game they would have jumped above them so the, the turnaround we've seen here is absolutely amazing then Brentford jump up to 14th that's the tail of the tape at the moment uh, here's Ollie Watkins for Aston Villa. Can they respond again? What a game we brought you here on TalkSport 2. Still 17 minutes of it left to play. Plus added time. West Ham equalise at Wolves. Lucas Paquetar makes it 1-1 at Molyneux. Chipped into the box by Tielemans. Looking for Ollie Watkins. But Zanka tidies up. But Ruslev can't prevent the corner for Villa Park at the Holt end. And the noise levels go up as the Villa fans try and rally the troops. 3-2 down. Yeah, now Aston Villa got to make sure corner over on their left hand side Douglas Ruiz will whip it in with his right foot yeah right footed in swinger where the Holt end meets the Doug Ellis stand it's right under the crossbar headed out by Visser doing some terrific defending went beyond the goalkeeper Flecken kept in play by Villa on this near side it's going to be laid back to Yuri Tielemans chips it down the right hand side of the box looking for Bailey but Reggion who's back out there to let the ball go back to his goalkeeper Mark Flecken. There's going to be a change for Brentford in a minute. Keen Lewis Potter's going to be on presumably for Reggion in a like-for-like -like switch. Incidentally in the championship, given that Leeds are losing and Leicester and Southampton are drawing. Ipswich, even though they lost at lunchtime in the Old Farm Derby, still going to be top of the championship. Leicester, 1-1 with Birmingham at the moment. They're on 86 points. 87 for Ipswich and Leeds on 86 losing at Coventry. Luton have just equalised against Bournemouth. Jordan Clark makes it 1-1 against Bournemouth. At the bottom, Sheffield Wednesday lead, but they're not out of the bottom three with the three points they're getting. But they would go above Huddersfield, who would go second bottom, rather than already relegated. Lincoln lead at Reading. That's a big goal for Lincoln, trying to hold on to a playoff place in League One. Reading nil, Lincoln won Freddie Draper. And Oxford have a fourth at Beleaguer Burton. James Henry makes it Burton nil, Oxford four. Villa coming forward down the right-hand side. 3-2 down. Leon Bailey tucks it in field to Conza. Now McGinn with his back to goal. 25 yards out. Loses out. And away come Brentford. Trying to keep the ball inside their own half. And now they will allow Nathan Collins to bring the ball forward. Damsgaard helping him on this near touchline. But he's gone in field to Visser. Who wins a free kick off Douglas Louise. That was actually quite cleverly won by Johan Visser. And they are going to make the change now. And Sergio Reggion can't continue. He shakes the referee's hand before it goes on. How often do you see that? Where a player shakes the referee's hand before he gets substituted. And Keen Lewis Potter's coming on to replace him. Brentford 3 2 up. He just shook Michael Soldier's hand as if to say, Have you seen me involved in those three goals, mate? <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to watch I'm in running for a man in the match here. Don't forget to watch the telly later. We'll see how good I was. So Reggion is off. And hopefully for Thomas Frank that's not too serious a problem that Reggion has got. But Lewis Potter played in that left wing back position in the 0-0 draw against Brighton last time out. And Nathan Collins has just gone down off the ball as Brentford are preparing this free kick which is just inside the Villa half on the left hand side. 14 minutes to go on TalkSport 2. It is somehow from nowhere Aston Villa 2, Brentford 3. I have to keep looking up at that massive scoreboard over to left that just to make sure that I've got the right score. You have to say, as Jensen drives the ball downfield, Damsgaard's giving chase. Villa tries to play the offside trap and it has worked because the flag has finally gone up against Damsgaard as he collects the ball at the corner flag. I think that's the first time I've ever seen seven players offside. Obviously yeah. it's Damsgaard who went to try and get the ball from the crossfield ball from Jensen. Is that the time to be playing an offside trap though when you're 3-0 down? Here's Brentford again with Visser, who got the winner at the moment. Spreading the play over to the right-hand side, looking for Rursler. But Villa win it back. Zaniolo, heavy touch, allows Zanka to get a foot in. And Burmo for Brentford. Rursler on his outside, level with the edge of the area. Tries to toe poke it past Dinia, but it was too heavy a toe poke. Villa get a goal kick. There's still belief around this stadium that Villa can get back level. But they've not made any further changes other than Zaniolo for Rogers at this point. Be fair to Brentford, even though they've gone free to up they haven't sat back they, like they did in the first half, but actually looked 
a lot more sprightly in attack. Obviously, got that little bit more confidence. Matthias Janssen is getting himself on board a little bit more. Zaniolo fell cheaply inside the Brentford half, looking for a free kick, but not given, and that's thread through by Imperma to Visser. Oh, Visser at the edge of the area, lost his footing at the edge of the D when he was preparing to shoot. Wow, action at both ends, and Brentford are not exactly declaring at three as things stand. But I think from Brentford's point of view, they've got that obviously that confidence. Now Visser and Wormo know that there's going to be a chance on the counter-attack. And, and Tony's coming on as well in a minute, Perry. I can see he's ready, so too is uh, Yehul Yamal, the Ukrainian, to come on. And also Alex Moreno and Musa Diaby definitely coming on for Aston Villa. I think it's a triple change soon for Unai Emery. It's 3-2 to Brentford. Villa coming forward with Dinya down the left-hand side. Cross to the far post, drops for Bailey. Lays it back to the edge of the area for Douglas Luiz. Who had the ball taken off his toe by Jan Elts. Legally, says the referee. And away come Brentford on the counter-attack. But it's Brian and Bomo on his own at the moment. Drifting down the right-hand side, up against Pau Torres. Gets into the area. Now he's got support. Tries to pull it back into the path of Jensen. But it's won back by Torres. And Villa can clear. Fulham nil, Newcastle one. Fabian Scher puts... Newcastle in front at Craven Cottage and AFC Wimbledon leads Salford City by a goal to nil in League 2. Changes afoot for both sides in a moment but Villa coming forward 3-2 down with Douglas Louise. Gets to 25 yards out, plays it infield to Tielemans. Urge to shoot by one or two around us. Instead he hands it to the right and Leon Bailey. Bailey now, right hand corner of the area. First time ball down the right hand side of the box for Watkins. Feels like eons ago that Watkins put Villa in front. It's back with Yuri Tielemans across to Pau Torres now Torres will lay it back to Diego Carlos Tielemans again for Villa finds Conser out to the right wing this near side to us once more and Bailey two Brentford players for company gives it back to Esri Conser there's players waiting for a cross in Claret and Blue Bailey might provide it now as he gets to the byline puts it along the deck it's along the deck and cleared away by two Brentford players and Martinez collects the ball on the halfway line for Villa 2-3 I think Thomas Frank will be pleased because Brentford had a counter-attack there. They actually committed five dance beyond the ball. Then obviously the ball broke down. For a minute there was a 5v5 situation from Villa, but Villa was too slow in their passing. You can hear the crowd getting a bit frustrated because Brentford have got their other five players back behind the ball. So there's ten behind the ball now, and it's just being played in front of Brentford's back five. Bailey goes for the byline for Villa. The cross is deflected up in the air, and that's headed in! Superbly by Oli Watkins! 3-3! What a game! At Villa Park, and Villa are not done yet! And it had to be the former Brentford player who scores again against his old club. The cross from Bailey was deflected off a Brentford boot. It made it difficult for Flecken, who was backpedalling. But Watkins rose brilliantly to nod it home at the far post. And we are all square with 10 to play on TalkSport 2. Villa 3, Brentford 3. Yeah, Mark Flecken is turning to Mark Flapham. It goes down as a goalkeeper there, Dan, because as you said there, good play from Bailey on the right right-hand side, just going on the right, getting to the byline, getting his cross in, it actually takes the deflection of Team Lewis Potter, that makes sure it loops up into the air, and then Mark Fleckham, Fleckham just slaps at the boys, goes over the top of his head, and there's Ollie Watkins at the far post, basically to end it into an empty net, to put Aston Villa right back level terms, 3-3 free free here at Villa Park. Well they've made the changes, Brentford, as that goal went in and they've been set up that goal was just land incidentally for Newcastle Fabian Scher stays 0-0 so Tony and Jarmol Yuk are on for Brentford and we are in the last nine minutes of normal time here grandstand finish this is anybody's game Perry Groves yeah there's a lot of jeopardy left in this game dance which we didn't see did we after a minute just after half time when Morgan Rogers put Aston Villa 2 0 up. I think Thomas Frank will be disappointed, Dan. The reason being is that Brentford got a bit carried away with themselves. When they were 3 2 up, they were committing too many men forward. That enabled Aston Villa to get themselves back on the ball, and that's why Leon Bailey was able to get to the byline to cross it. But Ollie Watkins are not in at the far post. Stoke 2, Villa 2, uh, West Brom 2, should I say. Stoke 2, West Brom 2 in the Championship. Andre Vidigal levels it up in the Potteries. It's level here 2 3 3. Villa coming forward. 
with Esri Konsa down the right hand side level of the area Bailey makes a run tries to pull it back drops for Konsa hits the defender and Brentford will clear it away Verbo though can't hold on to it and it's Watkins on a hat-trick against his old club who retrieves possession and finds Torres Coventry two leads one leads get a goal back through Joel Peru Villa get the ball out to Bailey again who supplied the cross for the equaliser he finds McGinn right hand corner of the box back in field for Diego Carlos again the shouts of shoot towards him McGinn receives it once more at the edge of the area back to goal Tielemans gives it back to him right hand corner puts a left footy ball deep to the far post Dean you can bring it down heads it across the face of goal and Zanka half volleys it out of play for a throw 3-3 three, three. Dan's all really get now with seven minutes to go of normal time plus added on time is this going to be Aston Villa laying siege to the Brentford goal as we have a Brentford can see the game out well you're listening to Villa 3 Brentford 3 on Talk Sport 2 with Enterprise rent a car whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day Brentford have a throw incidentally it was um, Damsgaard and Visser that went off to allow Yego Yamayuk and even Ivan Tony to come on and there's a couple more changes being readied Neil Mopai and Frank Onyeka will be on for the B shortly all square three each with six and a half minutes to go on Talksport 2 Diego Carlos heads the ball awkwardly up into the air Mads Roos left is brought down by Carlos free kick to Brentford halfway inside Villa Tetri out on the right hand side Middlesbrough have doubled their lead against Swansea in the championship Emmanuel Latte Laf has his second and there's a yellow card for Diego Carlos for that challenge on Mads Roos left that's given Brentford a free kick here at three apiece yeah, just a poor header initially from Diego Carlos he should be heading the ball clearly he said it straight up the air like he's got a crash helmet on and as the ball's uh, bounced down he said there he just barged into Mads Roos left gives an unnecessary free kick away gets himself a yellow card now it will be Matthias Janssen standing over the ball just outside the 18 yard box in the corner it's about 35 yards out Villa holding their line around about 15 yards from goal and they're going to make the double change now are Brentford just before the kick is taken and Brian and Bermo uh, back in the side today is one of those being taken off and the other player coming off would appear to be Matthias Jensen so the two players who have stood over the free kick are the two players being hooked so somebody else is going to have to take the responsibility I know that Thomas Frank obviously wants to get a fresh leg on but Natasha Janssen obviously is the Brentford captain he's the one who gives you that little bit of calm isn't he that little bit of stability when he gets himself on the ball but uh, Baptiste will come on but Bermo's done well back from fitness scored this afternoon and Neil Mopai is on to create his own particular type of havoc that he likes to do well he is an annoying bee isn't he that's what he is yes just buzzes around but maybe a wasp on Yeka on as well Newcastle are in front against Fulham Bruno Gimaraes and West Ham lead at Wolves James Ward Prowse in comes the free kick to the far post headed up in the air by Villa defending their own six yard line and Tielemans just whacks it clear downfield asking Leon Bailey to give chase on Yeka with an awkward header and Bailey almost got away but on Yeka got a foot in and steered it out of play for a throw otherwise Bailey was away down the Villa right 3-3 quickly taken throw Bailey gets it back from Consa gets to the byline right hand side right wing cross deep to the far post beyond everybody in Claret and Blue but Dini can retrieve finds Watkins left hand corner of the penalty area faced up by Lewis Potter Watkins rolls it back to Tielemans first time ball across to Consa Consa down the right hand side of the box for Bailey pulls it back near post but Brentford have got players back and can get it clear and it's back with Yarmulyuk by the corner flag inside his own defensive third and it's a good ball in field to Ayer and a good flick on from Tony almost got Mopay away but it's back with Torres four to play 3-3 three, three on TalkSport 2 Torres coming forward for Villa to the centre of the Brentford half Reading equalising against Lincoln 1-1 balls out to the left and rolled back to the edge of the centre circle for Diego Carlos quick ball for Consul on the inside right channel back out to Bailey once more on this near side the right wing he gives it back to Consul though Consul elects to release Bailey once more two Brentford defenders for company chips it between the two of them for Consul and it almost came off for Villa Brentford only get it half clear and then Consul hits the ball against Onyeka 
and that's been given as a throw rather than the corner because it hit the top of the corner flag. 3-3. Yeah, three, three. That's what Villa are trying to do, just isolate Leon Bailey out on this left-hand side up against Keane Lewis Potter who's just come on a sub. We've got Yamu Yuk who's just in front of him as well. So we've got two substitutes there, a double up on Leon Bailey. And he's had miles more joy when he's been going on the outside, whether it's regular on this time or since Keane Lewis Potter. That's where the equalising goal came from for Aston Villa, even though we got a, a lucky deflection off of Keane Lewis Potter when Bailey got the cross in enabled Watkins to just nod it home at the far post. According to what I've seen here, Villa have had 70% possession. And yet it's still 3-3 on TalkSport 2. Here's Ivan Tony trying to burst through challenges. He tried to release Mope, but Mope knew he was offside and knew he couldn't run after the ball. And it's cleared downfield and picked up by Nicolo Zaniolo for Aston Villa, charging down the far left-hand side. Early ball along the deck into the edge of the area, but that's smuggled clear by Brentford. Mope can't win it off Tielemans. Two minutes to go, three apiece. Is there a winner in this game? Villa look the more likely. Douglas Luiz lays it back to Diego Carlos. There's three substitutes being ready by Unai Emery for added time. Diaby, Duran and Moreno all ready to come on. But it's McGinn back to play. Finds Bailey right-hand corner of the box. What lazy cross. Comes back to him though from Yarmol Yuk. Still has it. Scheming his way down the right-hand side. Leon Bailey lays it off to Consa. Back it goes to Bailey once more. Puts in a left-footed ball to the far post. Brought down on the chest of Dinya. Rolls it back to Douglas Luiz, who clips it to the far post. Looking for Watkins. Headed out by Lewis Potter, doing some last-ditch defending. One back by McGinn, 30 yards out. Infielder goes to Bailey. Out to Tielemans, right-hand side of the box. Gets to the byline. Can he find a teammate? Blocked by Flecken at the near post. And behind for a corner, 3-3. Three, three. Relentless pressure now for Maston Villa Lane. Sees to Brentford's goal. Is whether they can find that little bit of quality that little bit of imagination. Thomas Frank just had his head in his hands there because Brentford had the ball and Neil Mope should be playing it into Ivan Tony. He's tried to, tried to play it out to the left-hand side to Yom, look, gave the ball away. That enabled Aston Villa again to get down their right-hand side. Well, Tiedemann's getting to the byline. They're not going to make the changes yet, Perry. They're still going to wait, our Villa. Despite the three players waiting on the touchline, they're going to have this corner first and McGinn's going to take at the whole ten. As we tick round towards added time. In it comes from McGinn to the near post. Flicks on by Torres. Punch clear by Flecken. Saniolo retrieves. Gets it back to Douglas Luiz. 25 yards out. Goes infield to Tielemans. Tielemans across to McGinn. Right-hand corner of the area. Left-footed ball in. Heads go up. And it's over the bar. Is it no? Overhead kick just over the bar from Dinia that time. And it's a goal kick to Brentford. And Villa will make the changes as we tick round towards seven minutes of added time. Is there a winner here? Three all. He's a brilliant ball in from John McGinn from that right hand side, getting the ball into his left foot. Looked like Esri Conta had a free head up, just mistimed his header completely, headed the ball up in the air. It comes to Luca Dini and he's got an acrobatic overhead kick. Can't quite get himself over the top ball, smashes it over Flecken's crossbar. Disappointment for you and me both, Colchester 1, Wrexham 2, Leicester 2, Birmingham 1. Steffi Mavadini looks to have put Leicester back on top of the championship. Lake Norian 3, Cheltenham 0. Players coming off, Tielemans and Bailey are coming off for Aston Villa. And Luca Dina also coming off. So Moreno and Duran are on, so too is Musa Diaby. And we're into that first minute of seven that have been added on by Michael Salisbury. 3-3. Three, three. Villa were 2-0 up. Brentford went 3-2 up. And now there's a head injury for a Brentford player around the centre circle. And the referee just comes to check on the condition of that Brentford player. And Unai Emery not impressed by the play being stopped for what he sees as housery and nothing more. Three all. It's to be fair, Michael Salisbury can't take any chances if he thinks he's a head injury. So Vitaly Janel just gather himself. He knows for World Dance that if the physio comes on for treatment, he goes off, you have to wait 30 seconds, but yep. it'll go down to 10 men, so it's just very shrewd play there, to be fair, from Vitaly Yano, just trying to take the sting out of the Aston Villa attacks. So, nearly two minutes of the minimum seven have gone, three all, Brentford in possession, coming down the left-hand side with Keane Lewis Potter, Tony and Mope waiting for a cross, Lewis Potter just slinks away from a couple of Villa challenges, Yarmul Yuk works it back 
to Nathan Collins who drills the ball left to right looking for Roos left heads the ball in field but it's a half volley clear by Pat Torres straight to the feet of Zanka who started the Brentford comeback good ball from Mope out to the right hand side on Yeka looking to release Roos left but he was caught in his heels a little bit Mads Roos left and it goes behind for a goal kick Martinez looking for an option Duran waiting for a long ball downfield Watkins waiting too it's thumped downfield and Watkins can flick the ball long to get Duran in behind but Collins defends well Zaniolo picks up possession for Villa drifts down the left hand side now Duran picks it up good ball into the near post almost found its way through to Ollie Watkins only half cleared by Janelt Moreno goes for the byline for Villa hits it against the defender corner kick to Aston Villa their tenth of the game it's three all in stoppage time on TalkSport 2 yeah just Aston Villa knocking on the door this relentless attacks now this time down the left hand side with Moreno really good block from Yano at the near post corner goes out for Villa on the left hand side Douglas Luiz to take it where the whole end meets the Doug Ellis right footed in swinger clips into the near post headed out by Brentford Diaby retrieves it and sends it back out to the left hand side and it's with Douglas Luiz up against Mopai whips it in left footed just goes over the head of Diego Carlos retrieved though by Zaniolo back for McGinn McGinn with a left footed ball into the area can Douglas always control it he can on his chest down the left hand side rolls it back to Diaby Diaby clips the ball into the box little touch almost got Villa away but away come Brentford as Luton go 2-1 upon Bournemouth Carlton Morris great interception McGinn to keep Tony away from the ball and Brentford have a throw just inside the Villa half of the field three and a half of the seven have elapsed it's 3-3 three, three. throwing from Tony finds Mope who keeps it in play at the dead ball line trying to work it back for Lewis Potter but Villa have won it back and the Clara and Blue are being urged forward it's Alex Moreno infield for Douglas Louise pretty much the halfway line for Aston Villa 3-3 three, three the score stoppage time in progress three minutes of it to go here's Moussa Diaby down the right hand side with two Brentford players for company crosses deep to the far post headed out by Rursleff retrieved by Pau Torres for Villa Torres with a cross in for the left hand side it's Ayer with a header this time almost went out for a corner on the far side instead it's a throw 3-3 three, three. Dance Aston Villa just gone the old fashioned 4-4-2 obviously with Duran coming on up front Wally Watkins getting the ball in the wide areas Zaniolo on the left hand side and Moreno just whipping the ball in as whether well Villa can find that little bit of quality Oh, into the box is cleared away by Brentford Huddersfield lead Millwall Reese Healy in the 94th minute they will have taken Huddersfield out of the bottom three Notts County three Harrogate nil in league two foul on a Brentford player so Luton are leading Bournemouth by two goals to one they were one nil down Brentford moving on to 29 points Forest 25 Luton 25 Burnley 19, Sheffield United 15 and Everton are winning, they're on 29 points, they're 1-0 up on Burnley who are down to 10 men but in the championship Leicester are back top of the championship with that late goal and Huddersfield are out of the bottom three on 43 points with that late goal that looks to have won it against Millwall Brentford free kick downfield back here at Villa Park with two minutes of added time to go 3-3 three, three. Hooked away by Diogo Carlos, heading back to the edge of the area, looking for Mope, but Villa get it clear, and away he scampers Moussa Diaby, over the halfway line, Yanel for company, still going Diaby, level to the edge of the area, plays the cross in, comes to the claim for Mark Flecken, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I think Moussa Diaby's just picked the wrong option there, Dance, because he would have got his head up, he could just roll Ollie Watkins in, in that inside right channel, he decided to go on the outside of his right foot to whip the ball in, just a little bit too much air on this cross just go straight to Flecken he's going to take his time obviously to clear his lines out to play for a Brentford throw taken by Neil Mopai into the feet of Ivan Tony, who tried to slip it down the left hand side for Mopai once more intercepted by McGinn but he's given it away what a Brentford got left in these last 30 seconds of added time Yamil Yukin field to Onyeka Onyeka has got Lewis Potter holding on this near side but Zaniolo wins it back ball up to halfway it's intercepted by Zanka and he wins it again he's fouled by Douglas Louise and Brentford have a late free kick here with the score at 3-3 and this frustration all around Villa Park yeah, to be fair to Zanka he actually knew that Douglas Louise would be a little bit late as the ball came to him he made sure that he 
got his side foot to it and then he just managed to skip himself out of the way so that Doug Zouis couldn't break his studs down his shin he just caught him so on his shin free kick to Brentford then just ahead of the centre circle this may well be the last action of the game because the seven minutes of minimum stoppage time have been played so it is purely down to Michael Salisbury at this point as to how much more we play on well, Aston Villa keeping a really high line here Dan. as Yano sends the free kick in headed up in the air by Alex Moreno Aya trying to protect it so it goes out of play and now has to hold on to it down by the corner flag good run from Christopher Aya along the dead ball line trying to feed it across the face of goal for Zanka cleared away by Villa still we play on at 3-3 it's with Nathan Collins Collins slides it down the right hand side of the box Zanka held his run for a moment now goes for the ball Martinez lost out and then he's been penalised for a foul the Brentford player for taking it off Martinez who had the ball under control as far as the referee was concerned and it's going to be a free kick or will the referee blow for full time there goes the full time whistle and Aston Villa have failed to get a healthy gap on Tottenham Hotspur in their race for fourth place they're now only three points clear of Spurs having played two games more it all looks so comfortable for Aston Villa 2-0 up in the early stages of the second half as Morgan Rogers scored his first Aston Villa goal but then suddenly from nowhere Brentford who'd been on the back foot for most of the first half and the early part of the second suddenly scored three goals in nine second half minutes Zanka just before the hour and Bermo just after the hour and Vissa on 68 minutes to put them 3-2 up and Villa were under huge pressure and looked very inhibited but Ollie Watkins having scored the first got the equaliser for Villa with 10 minutes to go to at least get Aston Villa a point it's a third draw in a row for Brentford and Villa still haven't the double done the double over Brentford in their history but is that top four finish going to happen? Spurs have got two games in hand and only three points to make up on Aston Villa. The Brentford supporters applauding their team's efforts. They very nearly took all three points back to West London. But as it stands at full time here at Villa Park, Aston Villa three, Brentford three.